Perfect. So, hello all, and welcome to, uh, today uh, to this special event. Uh, my name is Ryan Anderson. I am the outreach manager here at Kendo at Home. Uh, with me today, uh, we have Rosalind Strickland from Strickland Design. Uh, so, uh, Rosalind. Uh, so, before I, we we get going here on this, uh, just kind of some housekeeping items. Uh, so, as you know, we're we're here. Uh, today on Zoom, uh, up in the top right-hand corner, if you want to change the view at all, up in the top right-hand corner, there is that view button where you can change it if you want more of a gallery view, if you want uh, to see things a little bit clearer, you can edit the screen up there. Uh, down at the bottom, there is the Q&A and the chat features. Uh, please feel free throughout the programming. Uh, Ro Roslyn, quick question. Do you want me to, would you want questions to wait till the end? Do you want things coming through? Continuous. Um, people can ask the questions throughout the uh, yeah. presentation. Yeah, so uh, please feel free to throw any questions into the Q&A or chat feature. And, and as appropriate, we'll, we'll uh, bring them up throughout the, the presentation. Uh, and we'll have time at the end as well uh, to, to talk about questions and, and answers there too. Um, and then there is the uh, live transcription feature, the closed capturing down the bottom right. If you press the little carrot there, uh, it will give you some options to, such as to either hide the, the subtitles, change the settings in those, make them larger, smaller, et cetera, uh, if, the, if you are so inclined on that. Uh, but yes, as you know, uh, Kendo at Home are all about uh, trying to help people stay independent, uh, healthy, uh, age in place, and provide resources and education opportunities to, to help you uh, achieve that. So with us today along that mission is Rosalind Strickland of Strickland Design. Rosalind comes from a, a healthcare background, uh, working as a healthcare executive uh, for many years, and then she shifted into a, a passion of interior design and, and really optimal design uh, and intelligent design to really make the spaces that you're living in uh, optimal for aging, uh, utilization, et cetera, to, to help you live better lives in place. And Rosalind, I'm sure you can talk a lot about uh, these areas, and we're looking forward to your presentation today. Oh, well, thank you, Ryan. I really appreciate it. And with that, I will get started. Um, Rosalind Strickland Interior Design is really all about helping you to make your home your safe haven. That's what we want, a safe haven to remain in our homes, but we wanna be there safely so that we can move about in our homes and the community the way that we used to. But as we age, we can feel a lot more comfortable if we have a safe space. The goal of our company is to reduce inner family stress. It becomes very stressful with aging, especially when children live out of town and they're not close by, or they could be close by, but they have families of their own and they don't necessarily get to see mom and dad as often as they would like or used to. We also want to minimize falls. Falls is the number one condition that puts fam, um, aging individuals into a hospital. You call the um, EMS, they come to your home, they take you away, and you may not return back to your home for months. We want you to be able to minimize accidents in the home, minimize injury and falls. Falls, um, as I mentioned, is, is the number one um, indication that there is a problem within the home. And uh, many people die every year from falls alone. We want to reduce the number of hospital visits to the emergency department and reduce the number of readmissions. A little bit about myself. I live in Warrensville and have since 1987. I'm a native Floridian, so don't ask me why I left the sunshine to come to come to Cleveland, but I had, I was a child at the time and my parents, we went from Miami, Florida to Denver and then came and settled in Cleveland because that's where my father lived. Formerly worked in private practice and at Mount Sinai Hospital. And I worked over 35 years at the Cleveland Clinic in the uh, cancer department as an administrator, the employee health and the emergency department also the community relations for the system. And also um, we started a new department called the Office of Civic Education Initiatives that focused on 
connecting what we do inside the walls of healthcare with high school, basically from pre-K all the way to graduate school. So the students could begin learning the art of science and math, science of um, art and medicine, and um, begin to look at careers a little differently than what they're showcased on TV, which is basically all you see as a hospital and a nurse. I have a broad range of experience across social service agencies, colleges and universities, and community development. So as you look at what's happening, um, over the years, um, these come out of greater Cleveland area. You kind of look at as we age, there are different services that we need because we don't do the same things that we could do in our earlier ages. So from 2020, this is projecting from 2020 to 2025, what the costs will be to be able to bring in services to provide homemaking services, which includes cooking, cleaning, and errands. You're looking at a range going from over a little over $4,000 to around $5,000. And these are on a monthly basis. Home health aides. Many people need home health aides to be able to come in and bridge the gap between what happens when you leave a post-acute care setting in the hospital and coming home to rehab. So you go from the post-acute setting to rehab and then you um, are discharged home. So you're looking at almost $5,000 there a month. Adult daycare, if you can be at your home um, or you're still in your home, but you want to get out and have the socialization. So to be able to go to a specific facility to be able to carry out um, um, engagements like, um, you know, making crafts or making um, pillows. Some people have even gotten very inventive in doing things for the children's wards and being able to um, really keep up skills and socialization with your peers. Um, you're looking at almost $2,400 per month for, for adult daycare. Assistant so Rosalind, quick question on that. So are these just Cleveland prices? These are, um, actually, this is a range across the nation. Okay, so they are national averages. National okay. averages. Perfect. So for Cleveland, you can vary up or down, depending mm -hmm. on who you are and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Assisted uh, living facilities. Did you have another question? I was just, I was just going to add in. So some people um, were... were Kendall at Home is based in the Cleveland area. We do have members out in Massachusetts uh, and, and Kentucky as well, uh, and some even across the country. Uh, so they do vary regionally on it. Uh, Cleveland tends to be around the average, if I'm not mistaken, Roslyn. Uh, and then like Massachusetts, it's going to be higher, uh, right. et cetera. Um, yep. And that's someone just commented that in the, in the chat right now. Yes, it's going to be a little bit lower, usually in Kentucky. Massachusetts Correct. is a little bit higher than the Ohio average. So. Correct. So with respect to assisted living facilities, one bedroom, or um, you're looking at going from $3,900 to a little over $4,500 per month. And uh, one thing that I want to mention with your assisted living facilities, you go into assisted living facilities, but should you get to the point where you need care, beyond what the assisted living facility can offer, you need to bring in home health aides. So you're looking at this price, plus you're looking at this price up here to be able to bridge the gap, to be able to bring in services. Yes, that is your home in the assisted living facility. However, they are not a full range um, they have um, a limited amount of things that they can do for you should you become ill. Nursing home, semi-private rooms, you're looking at almost $10,000 per month in the year 2025. 
and nursing home in the private rooms, you're looking at definitely over $10,000 per month in the year 2025. So a family, a husband and wife on a conservative side could actually begin using, I would say a little over $100,000 per year if both of you were, um, should happen to go into a nursing home, which can zip through your pension and your um, retirement benefits pretty quickly. Right now we're projecting that we have over 10,000 people per day are turning age 65, and this is nationally across the country. And between now and December 31st of 2029, this will continue, this trend will continue. So as you can see, a lot of people are um, beginning to age. I just went over this, okay. The cost of care, this was based on New York Times recommendation um, in May of 2021. Over $50 billion is spent annually on medical costs related to non-fatal fall injuries. So you can see that is a huge number and it is growing. And they are projecting over 750 million spent annually on medical costs related to fall injuries. This is a really, really big deal. Falls can occur um, based on an accident, like if you have a lot of rugs on your floor, that type of thing. Um, the majority of the falls come in the area of the bathrooms. And this is a projection over what some of the modifications, uh, the percentage of modifications and where they happen to occur in the home. 48% of them, as you can see, is a large number occur in the bathroom. And that is because of water, um, entrance ways or stairwells. I was visiting a lady a week or so ago because she was having difficulty getting in and out of her home. And one of the things that she talked about was Okay, so what happens because the stairway entrance into the home, which unfortunately she did not own, she was leasing. Believe it or not, there was an 11 inch step off for her to get into the home. That's pretty steep for a, a regular person, let alone someone who is going undergoing dialysis on a weekly basis. 20% in the kitchen renovations. Oftentimes the kitchen is overlooked for modifications, but there's a lot that can be done there. And the exterior of the home, is your home well lit both interiorly as well as exteriorly so that you can see where you're going. You don't have a lot of cracks in your um, concrete where you could um, twist over your ankle and fall on the ground, break a leg or break a hip. But the overall home renovations usually account for about 9%. This is a home that I did where the lady was 90 years old. And believe it or not, she was, she's pretty, pretty stable. But she has to walk out of her house and over to the side here to get her mail. The mail, I know, is a huge thing because that's how you communicate with the outside world and people send you things and we all like to receive packages and mail, um, but there was no guardrail here. So she was actually stepping out here on black ice, leaning over to get her mail out of the box, which was very risky for her. She was frail and I feared for her being able to fall over into the side and no one would find her, especially in the snow. So we put guardrails on her home and now she can actually have something here to kind of buffer the fall and reach into her mailbox. I tried to get her to put it here on the inside of this pillar where we could actually do a modification to the home so that she could reach inside. She wouldn't even have to come outside. She could just reach right there in the box on the inside of the doorway and get her mail, but she didn't want to risk it. So 
we put guardrails up, which actually turned out to be very nice for her. This again was someone who had a, oh, this is a fall hazard right here. Um, her children had actually put this piece of slab so that she could get from the garage to the mud room and into the house. And as you can see, it's slanted here. Easy for your foot to get caught, especially if you're in a hurry. And again, your foot get caught up here, you tip over and fall. So we ended up putting um, guardrails here on the door. This was another thing. She had no guardrails on either side of the doorway to get out and she was frequently bringing the garbage out of the home. So this was a lady, her husband had Parkinson's disease and they had no way of getting, this is a long stairwell, a long walkway to get to the front door. And we put a guardrail here that actually complemented the housing um, texture as well. Um, and colors. And so he has something to hold on to, to get him from this walkway all the way to the front door, which actually worked out very nice for them. And we put a gate up here at the front so that she could actually go out onto the porch and actually put food in for the bird feeder. So that's another thing that we do. We try to tailor the recommendations to the chronic conditions that people have because it's not cookie cutter and it's not all one size, one size fits all. It's based on what's going on in your life at the time so that it, we can make it relevant for you. Guardrails are not just for the exterior of the home. They can also go inside the home. So this one, we put a hallway guardrail coming down because we had a lady who was 90 years old and she had balance issues. And this was a really long hallway for her to walk from the bedroom to the living room. So we put something down for the hallway for her to be able to access. And if you can see that it's grooved so that she can actually grasp it with her hands and um, walk along the wallway a little bit more safely. This was a very tiny bathroom, so we work with those as well. And this was a lady who had fallen. She was 90 years old and had broken her pelvis. And her daughter was concerned about her getting back to the bathroom and being able to shower and remain have some independence by going to the bathroom and showering for herself. So we found a small shower chair with a back on it and sides. It's like a captain's chair, but you could sit in it. And one of the reasons that we recommend one that has a back and sides is because often as we age, we begin to lose our balance or get dizzy at any moment. And so this kind of helps stabilizes us. And we actually put in a little uh, grab bar here that still functions as a soap dish to make it a little bit more stylish. And we put grab bars here in front of the toilet that can serve as towel racks. And then we had a grab bar here that um, next to the toilet that doubles as a toilet tissue holder. So we try to look at things and make them a little bit more stylish and functional for the needs, because one of the things we don't want to do is to have your home look like an institution. No one wants that. That's very depressing. And we want to make your quality of life, improve your quality of life and make things better for you. This was another, um, this was in a mud room. A lady was 90 years old and she had nothing to get her from the doorway to the house. So we put in steps and we made the steps three inches, which is something that she could manage. Uh, one of the reasons that we recommend three inches is because it's a little bit lower. And sometimes as we age, we tend to, um, our ankles and feet tend to swell 
and they become harder to lift. So we wanna make things as easy as possible. And we put a grab bar here down the side and we put one on the doorway so that she could enter the doorway as well, a little bit more easily. And as you can see, this is an oil rub. It's not your typical stainless steel, but we tried to do something that would match the brick that was in that, that um, mud room. This was a lady who lived in a, um, a development, a homeowners association in which she um, actually, she was still driving at age 92. And unfortunately she broke her femur on her steering wheel. She literally had no way of getting into her home. So we put a temporary ramp Yes, ramps can be temporary. You don't have to spend um, a lot of money for uh, over $10,000 to put in a, a permanent ramp. So we put in a, a temporary ramp for her to get her in and out of the house in a wheelchair while she was undergoing rehab. And then as she progressed through the rehab, got well, we removed the ramp very easily. But this was one that we put in, in the front of her home and that um, we had it so that uh, um, it made a nice walkway because one of the other things people don't realize is calling the, this saved her a lot of money. She was going to rehab three times per week and she had to see her, do her doctor intermittently during the uh, rehab stay. So if she did not have this ramp, she would have to call an ambulance. The ambulance would put her on a gurney three times per week to and from rehab to take her to the rehab place at $300 per visit, per, um, per um, run to take her to the doctor. So this saved all of that and she was able to enjoy her home in the meanwhile. And she's doing very well. The ramp was there for a total of around 60 days and we deinstalled it and she's at home doing well. So as I was mentioning earlier, we tried to main, um, focus things on what's going on with people. And Alzheimer's disease is one of the um, more frequent diseases that I encounter. But you need to look at, you know, stove burner sensors to go on so that they don't harm themselves look at appliances with automatic shutoffs. Now, I'm not saying that you need to purchase new appliances, but if you're building your home, this may be something that you might wanna consider, especially if you have someone who has either dementia or someone who has Alzheimer's. They, they, they do make appliances that have automatic shutoffs. Um, the door locks on the bathroom doors need to be removed, but you can read, we replace them with door locks, not door locks, but actually the, um, the hardware that goes on the doors that do not have locks on them for the bathroom so that you, if they lock themselves in, you can easily get to them. You need to look at automatic thermometer for your water temperature so that you don't scald yourselves. That's a big issue with all my patients because they don't, they don't send the brains to the signal to signal the brain like you, they did in earlier years before they had Alzheimer's. Parkinson's, this is a big issue with lighting and reducing the glares and reducing shadows for individuals with Parkinson's disease. You also want to minimize reflective surfaces. So here's where things come in with the kitchen and also the bathroom, um, the bathroom um, vanity. You want it to be a non-reflective surface so that if I have Parkinson's disease, I might look at shadows or see shadows or things that maybe are not really there because they're giving me a glare. But the reality is, is that it agitates them and they can become um, very agitated and anxious once this happens. So getting up at night, you wanna make sure that your night lights have a low, have no glare 
and reduce shadows. And that's why lighting is extremely important. But I will say that technology has come a long way. Um, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. But you can have technology to monitor the caregiver access to your home. So say for example, that you are living alone or it's just you and your husband and um, your caregiver who's coming to care for you needs access to your home, you can give them access through a device um, that you can actually, or an app that you can actually put on your phone. You can monitor climate control. Um, a lot of times as we age, we tend to be um, colder a lot because of reduced blood flow. And um, you can monitor, okay, well, even your, um, your children can monitor your uh, climate control. You can do that through, they can do it through an app. So say you have a son and daughter who live in Boston and, oh, I know mom and dad usually get cold around the evening hours. They can actually turn up your heat through their cell phones and turn it down during the day. Turn it up or turn it down. Monitor door security, the same thing. Monitor sleep patterns. There's actually an app that can help, say you have a caregiver that comes for eight hours per day, but you need someone, what happens for the other um, 16 hours, you know, per day that you don't have care, but you can actually have it monitored via a security system that they can be placed in your homes that can not only monitor what's going on in the home, but it can monitor sleep patterns, for instance, I know mom and dad usually get up around 10 a.m. Well, for the last couple of weeks, they've only been getting up at around closer to noon or one o'clock. So this is something that can be installed your, into your home that can monitor different patterns. It can monitor bathroom breaks that can actually do serve as a prevention because frequent bathroom breaks is can often signal that you have a urinary tract infection. So the patterns can be monitored and graphed on a phone. They can be graphed on your cell phone. They can be sent to your doctor so that they can um, also keep track of what's going on at your home as well. And Alexa now has a voice. This is something that is becoming very, very popular um, so that you can um, call out to Alexa um, to say, you know what, I need help or whatever. You can call for, for an emergency. Some of them can actually be programmed to contact your fire department or your emergency rescue departments as well. So that um, at all times, especially if you're living alone, you can, um, I've, I've fallen and I can't get up or um, something has happened in the home or whatever that you need to have um, people come to your home or they can alert your um, children, especially if they live in town. It makes it very nice. So technology is really getting more in the groove of what we can use it for and how we can use it, but we need to be smart about how we use it and use it for, um, different ways that can improve our health and make notifications when necessary. And now I'd like to open it up for any questions. I'd love to be a resource for you. And I'd love to entertain any questions that you may have about the presentation. Perfect. Thank you so much, Roslyn, for, for all that information. Uh, so if there's any questions that anyone has, uh, please feel free to throw into the the Q&A chat there as well. Rosalind, one question I have is, so um, wh what do you see people often neglecting? The show? So what's that one, maybe one or two common things that usually go overlooked that uh, either when they're doing a con new build, a construction, finding a new uh, downsizing, something like that when uh, people, should be looking at a little bit more often than they usually do. Okay, 
especially with respect to new build, uh, I'll go there since you mentioned it. One of the things that I find with respect to the new build is, is that the construction workers and the and or the architect do not often take into account where people are. You know, I might be healthy today, but I could be unhealthy tomorrow. Um, I don't find, I'll give you an example. I worked with a lady who was building a new home for her 90 year old parents. Mm -hmm. We went over the blueprints and everything. And so at the conclusion, I asked her, are, um, are your, what are, what's the health status of your parents? She said, they're pretty healthy. We don't have any health issues. The only issue we have is that neither one of them can hear. Well, that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I was able to find a security system that was able to integrate the strobe lighting mm -hmm. for them and also um, put in a bed shaker that would alert them in the event a fire broke out in the middle of the night. Mm. So that is one thing. Um, with respect to people who are currently in a home, one of the big things that I see that people overlook is how do I, is to upgrading the bathroom, mm -hmm. upgrading the bathroom to raising the toilet, um, getting a comfort height toilet, and also putting in safety bars. It is extremely important because slips happen in a matter of seconds. It's so easy too, because you, you think about it, as you referenced earlier on in the presentation, like that's where a lot of people pay attention to is in that bathroom area, because that's, as we, we know, that's where a lot of the majority of the falls happen. Uh, and it seems so simple to just throw in a, a grab bar or things like that. And yet, uh, for one reason or another, some people uh, forget to do so or, or, or avoid doing it. And it's such an easy fix that can save not just costly medical later down the road, but just even being able to promote your own independence and well-being. I mean, if you break a hip or something like that, there's a long road to recovery if you're able to recover from that. It's huge. So, and yeah. that's one, one of the things. Um, okay, so 48% of modifications occur within the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And um, when you look at the numbers of being uh, across that continuum of the different types of modifications, it is much cheaper to make the modifications than it is to pay for expensive medical care. Mm -hmm. So the hip replacement that you mentioned, you're talking about $70,000 just for a hip replacement. Whereas, okay, so maybe half of that cost could have been used to modify your home and to make it more safe. And you wouldn't have to go into a hospital. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm seeing a couple different uh, questions are starting to come into the chat here on it. Um, one stays on, on the topic here that we're on, on, on falls and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, someone commented that uh, there was a, um, she knows as you're talking about home improvements and stuff like that, tripping hazards yes. uh, was something that, that wasn't talked about as much to it. Is there ways to avoid tripping hazards, common tripping hazards? You kind of alluded to it at the beginning uh, in the picture with the slanted uh, cement slab there, right, right outside the door. Uh, can you talk about tripping hazards, kind of ways to, to maneuver around those? Yes. Okay, so one of the things we recommend is removing all area rugs in the home because you can slip and fall in a second on those. Another thing is looking at non-slip flooring. Mm -hmm for the home, especially in the bathroom. Um, a lot of the tile today is non-slip, but we actually, even if you don't, if you're not looking to change your tile, one of the things we can do is put a non-slip flooring solution over your existing tile that will make it non-slip. Not only non-slip for the flooring, but you also might wanna consider non-slipping your tub as well, especially if you're keeping your tub. We don't recommend tubs unless the, the client really wants the tub. 
uh, we recommend a zero threshold shower, something where you can wheel right in should you need if you are in a wheelchair, but you can either walk right in, step right in, but you're not stepping over a piece of rubber or whatever, because that's slippery as well to get into a shower and pulling the shower heads down so that they are actually eye level mm -hmm. and keeping people independent that way. Because the goal is to modify the home so that A, you're safe, that you can age in place independently, improve your quality of life, but also you want to make sure that you can, excuse me, that you can, um, that you can be there when you, you have what you need when you need it. Absolutely. I mean, it, you're mentioning the zero entry things. I know there's some tubs that are, have like the swinging door and yeah. things like that. But as you're mentioning, if you're in a wheelchair, it, it, if mobility is a strong issue, that might not be the best option there for That's as right. well. That's um, right. The yeah, other someone, thing with the, the tubs, mm -hmm. the doors, one of the things, one of the reasons that we do not recommend the um, the tubs for older adults where you can sit in them, that's mm -hmm. what you're talking about, yep. is because swinging the door open, first of all, they take 50 gallons of water to fill, yeah. number one, <laughs> okay. That's, so that's a lot. Bill, <laughs> so your water bill skyrockets. So we're not looking to add costs. Mm -hmm. That's number one. The lip to get into those is usually three to four inches. So again, that's a heavy lift for someone who's already having difficulties with their leg swelling. Mm -hmm. And then the second piece of it is, is that, am I going to remember as I'm sitting there taking my bath, am I going to remember to let the water drain out before I open the door? I wouldn't even thought of that. That's, that's why I'm laughing on that. Like it, to, to have to let 50 gallons of water drain completely. Right. Because it's, the door is gonna open up everything too. Correct. So. And it'll, you know, it'll, and with older people, they tend to get cold quicker. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting there in the tub while the water's draining and you're getting mm -hmm. cold, you know? So that's why we recommend showers. The yeah. other reason the showers is a little bit more efficient is if you have someone who is coming in to give you care, personal care to help you with your showering, mm -hmm. it's much easier for them to maneuver around a shower curtain mm -hmm. or a large shower with a shower door, whatever, yeah. than it is to um, help them in a tub. Mm. Yeah, and someone here has even, even commented on uh, they, they use uh, this showers with the sidebar that yep. you can raise and lower as yep. well as uh, I know some have the removable uh, shower head where you can right. go around it and you can use it uh, however uh, which again would help caregivers too in that case too if they're able to use a shower head that's movable uh, from a lot of fronts there. Um, one question that came up was uh, in relation to exterior stairs. Yeah. Um, so Obviously, stairs become an issue, uh, and, and if you have like a balcony or something like that on the back or a deck, um, getting up and down those could, can be difficult for some. Are there chair lifts for that? Are they weatherproofed? And kind of what what's price ranges on that? Would you be looking? At? <laughs> they yeah. are. They are. Uh, there are chair lifts. Um, now, one of the things that I recommend is okay. So, you're looking at trying to get into your home either the front of the home, the side of the home, or the back of the home. Mm -hmm. um, there are chairlifts that you can purchase. They are very expensive. They're almost as expensive as putting a ramp up. You're looking at, um, I've seen them as high as seven, $8,000. Mm -hmm. um, many are not waterproofed or climate control. Mm -hmm. So you have that to contend with. You don't want a rusty looking, you know, apparatus trying to get into your home. 
So I look for alternatives to place those things. Mm -hmm. First place I look is, do you have an attached garage? Mm -hmm. And looking at that, we even put grab bars in the garage. That's another location for them to keep people safe um, mm -hmm. so that they can get up the stairs to get to the doorway to get into their home. Mm -hmm. The other problem is um, you can put in a small chair lift, say in the garage to get up the steps and get into the home. The problem is, do you have enough of a platform for the chair lift to sit on so that you have enough capacity or turn capacity as we call it to mm -hmm. be able to open your door and get inside the door safely. Mm -hmm. So usually it involves not only the chair lift, but it involves a door modification as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and, and so someone was kind of mentioning too, it, it's different based on geography, different based on situations to it as well. So the person commenting here was, was uh, added on after the fact about city living and living in multi-housing units uh -huh. uh, where it might not have a garage attachment, might not have things like that. Um, different, so I, I think, Rosalind, from kind of what I'm hearing on it, it's, there might not be an outdoor chairlift that might be weatherproof. Those, it's an electrical unit at, at the end of the day that, that's going to be powering it. So if there's stairs on the inside, that's, that would be optimal for a chairlift, especially for a steeper incline where it might be in a city living unit, um, uh, where a ramp might not suffice due to the incline slope to it. Mm -hmm. What I have seen uh, done, and, and Rosalind, you might be able to, to attest to this in areas of, uh, instead for units with stairs on the outside to to do wooden ramps with um with tacky with uh non-stick surfaces uh, uh, applied to it of some mm -hmm. sort um that you can then go back and forth it's going to take a while to get up uh, at the incline but i've seen different things like that done rosin i don't know if there's anything that you've seen done for maybe like uh to get up to a second story outside to get up to a second second story, here's another thing that you could do with an ex exterior um, chairlift. Um, you can put in, you have the chairlift, which is expensive, mm -hmm. but to make it really work and really work well, I recommend putting an awning over so that you can actually get up. You don't have to worry about the inclement weather. Mm -hmm. um, now, Sometimes you can do that easily. Sometimes you can't, but it would take a little bit of a modification, mm -hmm. some type of awning over the chairlift as it's going up um, to make it a little bit more easier for people. Mm -hmm. so, sounds good. And uh, Roz, Rosalind, you do have your information there. I, I, I see for, for maybe some deeper dives into some uh, uh, situations that people might be looking at as they're aging in, uh, aging in place. I know you are located in the Cleveland area. What what's your what's your geographic that you cover, a and um, are there other uh, companies like you that might service areas that you might not cover? <laughs> Actually, I go wherever God sends me. <laughs> so I even don't better, even better. <laughs> Um, the other thing that I need to mention is I am a certified senior home safety specialist. Mm -hmm. So I can actually do interior as well as exterior um, assessments of your home and make recommendations. Mm -hmm. And they can go from there in terms of implementing them, working with different contractors. I can actually provide the contractors or I can work with contractor of your choice or someone that you're more comfortable with. But there are a lot of innovative things to do that can make your life a lot easier and uh, help you age in place a lot better than um, some of the regular things that I, that I have seen. Yeah. Make you a little bit more comfortable make your home your safe haven, as I like to call it. Perfect. And, and that's what we're all looking for is to try to create that safe haven where you can live independently. You don't have to worry about things. You don't have, you, you're in a state right now where you might be independent. 
but you want to be uh, set up everything so that you can take care of everything going forward to it. So yeah, my recommendation is uh, if you have specific questions that you're trying to address with, in regards to your home and things like that, uh, contact uh, Roslyn on that um, and uh, or, or another uh, uh, provider of your choice on these things. Pictures always help, I know for, for a fact too, uh, and trying to dissect a situation. I know it's tough sometimes uh, typing things out over, over text in, in, in the chat. Um, and uh, Again, please feel free to start keep sending in questions. Another one just came in here. Okay. Um, do you find that there are long-term uh, insurance policies that pay for some home modifications or, or does insurance Medicare maybe pay for some of these uh, okay. systems? I will, I will tell you, Medicare does not. Medicare only pays, it's amazing to me. Medicare calls itself as being preventive care, <laughs> but Mm, they, they'd they rather pay for a $70,000 hip replacement than to pay for the things that you could use to, to modify your home so that you wouldn't need the hip replacement to begin with. Um, Long-term care insurance will pay for some of the things. They're very limited, but they will pay for some things. Um, another thing that you can do is to contact your Department of Aging in your particular community. Sometimes they have grant monies that they can give to um, residents as long as you qualify according to the, to the um, eligibility criteria for the grant mm -hmm. to make the home modifications that's needed. Another thing that you can do is there's a program that's called the Home Heritage Program which is actually a program that is run out of the uh, Restoration Society. Mm -hmm. So they have two pots of money. One pot of money will upgrade homes that are you know, considered of historical value. Mm -hmm. And you have to um, adhere to their um, guidelines for that. They have another pot of money that's the Home Heritage Program. And if your city participates, you can actually make home modifications through them and they offer extremely, and I do mean extremely low interest rates, mm -hmm. like one and 2% okay. to make the modifications to your home. Because the whole goal is you obviously purchased your home for a reason. Mm -hmm. This is where you and your husband chose to live, raise your family. We want to keep you there. But we also realize that as you age, maybe you haven't as been as attentive to a lot of things as you were in your younger years. So this is a way to get a pot of money to be able to make the home upgrades that you need. Mm -hmm. Rosalind, that, that's fantastic information there too, to, to, to just, Sometimes uh, we don't know where to go, I, I think is the biggest thing, especially when it comes to aging. Um, I know we have a mix of, of people on in attendance here today. Uh, for, for those who are Kendo at Home members, please feel free to contact uh, your, your care coordinator on that. Your care coordinator can, can help you uh, figure out different resources if these are modifications, things that you're looking to, to, to do here. Uh, in the future, you're looking to do right now on that, and we'd be happy to have those conversations with you uh, on it. And uh, uh, other, otherwise, Roz is a fantastic resource to, to um, contact and, and try to get a, a broader scope of everything there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's not seeing any other questions start to come into the chat on it. Um, Please feel free to send in anything else in the chat here. I'm just gonna share whoop, uh, one second here. Um, as we're kind of wrapping up here on it, um, one second, swapping that so I can actually share my screen now. Um, yes, and then I am sharing. Uh, I will take out my screen. Yeah, so uh, just to kind of let everyone know of upcoming programs here at Kendall at Home. Uh, so up next for us, 
Uh, next Friday, July 8th at 11 a.m. Uh, is our coffee hour for, for, for July. That's gonna be uh, featuring Matt uh, Valencic of the Audubon Society of Greater Cleveland. He's gonna be talking about the wetland birds of the Eastern US. So the wetlands kind of span uh, all across the US. Uh, there's wetlands in Massachusetts and Ohio. Uh, Kentucky and, and it varies uh, across the nation on it. So uh, perhaps uh, you've seen some birds on nature walks and, and you kind of are like, you know, I don't know what that is. So he's going to give a, a deep dive of not just the birds, but also other uh, um, organisms that you can find there. Uh, on Wednesday, July 13th at 11 a.m. Uh, is going to be Make a Plan with Kendo at Home. These are our virtual seminars. So if you are not a Kendo at Home member and you want to learn more about what Kendo at Home is, who we are, what we do, uh, please feel free to join that. If you are a member or if you have any loved ones uh, that you know might be interested, friends, family, neighbors, please feel free to send that along too. Uh, and and uh, they can learn more about Kendo at Home as an offering there. On Friday, July 22nd at 11 a.m. is gonna be Healthy Aging Matters. That's gonna be beyond uh, driving with dignity. So uh, Healthy Aging Matters is usually a, a course that uh, Kendo at Home uh, offers to members. We're opening up this, this month uh, to, to uh, the whole community as we're gonna be featuring uh, Matt Gerwell, who is a retired Ohio State trooper and founder of Beyond Driving with Dignity. And what he's gonna be talking about is he's gonna be talking about as we, as we age, what happens behind the wheel? Uh, what should we be aware of as we are driving? And when maybe to, to kind of uh, start to take into account, well, I'm at put, uh, am I putting myself and or other people on the road at risk if, if I'm driving and things of that nature? So he's gonna be talking about that very important topic, very sensitive topic too, of, of driving with, with uh, while aging. Uh, so very important topics coming up for us here. As always, we do thank the Friends Foundation for the Aging uh, for, for helping uh, with our events here and uh, all are welcome. Uh, so please feel free to send any uh, one, any loved ones, friends, neighbors, these events here, uh, more the merrier on it and uh, some great information coming up. Uh, these are all available on our website, kendallathome.org. Uh, and up in the top right is a courses and seminars uh, page uh, there for us. Um, so, Rosalind, there's one other thank you. Uh, so, Rosalind, we, we just have some thanks pouring in from, from the chat here. Uh, people okay. thanking you for your time and the presentation uh, and, and the information you were able to provide here today. It was, it was very informative, uh, uh, great for not the, not only those looking to potentially move or do a new build, but those currently living at home, how to how to prepare for the future there. So we thank you so much for your time and, and talking to us about these very important topics. Oh, you're more than welcome. Thank and you. I really enjoyed it. And I wish you a very nice holiday weekend. You, you, you as well. And to all our viewers today, thank you so much for attending uh, this session today. Have a happy 4th of July and holiday weekend. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on future events. Okay. Thank you.